Welcome back everybody to the Chasing Psychological Safety video series. Today we're going to talk to you about feedback um, and you're going to hear a bit about how we believe feedback should be approached, how we know feedback should be approached from our experiences of working with clients on this, um, and a little bit about a few techniques uh, that we've also experienced with our clients and the people we work with. So first of all, feedback. How do you make it a live part of your culture? It's such an important and valuable tool in a team to have short, effective, real feedback loops. And when we talk about those short feedback loops, what we mean is that you, you seek feedback from your people. And what we're looking for in terms of impact is that those people feel listened to and that their voice is valued. So you seek feedback from the people that you work with, from your team and then you act on that feedback. And then to complete that short, effective, live feedback loop, you let them know that that happened. So the next opportunity you have to communicate with your team after you sort that feedback live and you have that fantastic conversation that frankly you will have felt great about after having, you come back to them and you're able to say, I went away and I found out about that or I had that conversation with another senior leader in the organization and this is what the answer is, or this is what I found out and what we can now work together collectively on. The extension of that is that it's got to continue. It can't happen once and then die a death. It's got to be part of your continuing collective team culture. And that's when it becomes really, really powerful. And the good news, because one thing that we often talk to leaders about is that once you're working on a team level, you know, it, not all the responsibility is on you. The responsibility is on you to get it started. The responsibility is on you to do it and to role model it. Once you're working as a team with a short live feedback loop, you can start helping each other out so that you, you're listening to each other, you're gaining feedback, then perhaps other people in the team are seeking out some of the responses and you have those answers coming back live in your next team meeting, retro, stand up, whatever it might be. So the, the overarching theme of our message today is those short, effective, live feedback loops. Precisely. Protect the loop is uh, what, what we would leave you with. Um, because it's one thing for people to believe that you've started a conversation. It's a very different thing for them to believe you're continuing a conversation or that conversation is anything more than a sterile exercise they've seen hundreds of. So right now we all live in realities or many of us are in companies that are well intentioned enough to have put some types of surveys in place. Sadly, uh, the, the, the hope and the trust had stopped somewhere along the way and all we now have is a very um, scholastic exercise of box ticking that's many times disliked if not hated by employees for good reason. It's a, it's another burden on our time that we see no positive result out of. We either fear it because it might become a punitive uh, tool of sorts, or we dislike it because it's a useless thing that we never see any kind of um, good coming out of. So, so for feedback to mean something, for the way in which we, we, we ask each other to, to signal that it is um, emotionally valuable, but it has to be very clearly defined, very obsessively shown at every level, both at the team level and at the organizational level. And there are some um, ways to do it. Obviously, you could have serious pieces of software, such as ours, such as some type of surveys that are not just dry, you know, kind of yearly things. Um, we, we would not suggest you, you have those. So that's probably a killer of feedback. But the, the more lively and more modern tools for acquiring how people, the information of how people are feeling and then giving them back some form of dialogue are there, find them and invest in them. But outside of that, and if you can't, there are multiple very innovative ways we've seen along the way of people truly opening dialogue lines and being um, religious about how important this communication is. One of these examples we're working on, we're putting together a presentation for um, the DevOps Summit um, next month, Fiona and I, and we were looking at some examples and one that jumped to mind is of a company that has um, attempted to find the middle ground between the Spotify check-in at the end of every retro, the um, amazing Atlassian check-in, check-out, a version of people saying every day how they felt about their day 
as they as they leave the building and they had um, a very analog but incredibly powerful visual way of showing how people felt which is they had this massive uh, three different buckets of uh, three different colors of tennis balls and people would just kind of pop them into a long um, plastic container, if you wish, as they were leaving the building, depending on how they felt. So by the next morning, as you entered it, you'd know how the last day went visually. You had this many green ones, this many yellow ones, this many red ones. Um, so it was a very visual and powerful reminder of we heard you, we know how you felt. Obviously, that only works in a physical world. We have now translated to a fully digital remote work from home much more challenging actual environment and what we would advise in that case and i'm sure you've seen some incarnations of that pop out either on your slack channels or on your um, facebook work um, or god knows where else in your different conversations online are the community check-ins where some type of community manager would ask how are we all feeling today and then offer some colored hearts as a response and people would say well if i'm lonely it's a yellow if i'm great it's a pink and so on and so forth and it's a very effective way of feedback because people just give it to you quickly and then forget about it. What is missing there, and I would encourage everyone to take a step back and think about protecting the loop, is unless I see a next day, this is how many of each we had tally, it is a completely sterile exercise, just as useful as a yearly dreary survey. Absolutely. And I think one of the further tools that we I've talked about for decades, but is so important in terms of helping people to feel heard and listened to and to following up on any kind of live feedback mechanism that you're using is active listening or in the words of the Google researchers, ostentatious listening, which is superb. So that means when you are having those conversations, be it with an individual or with a group, being doing everything in your power, everything that you can possibly think of to be completely present and undistracted, to treat the person or the people across the room, the table, the Zoom call, whatever it might be from you, as if they are your best friend talking to you about what is deepest in their hearts at that moment in time. So that means things like turning off your devices or putting them to one side it means things like making sure that you're not looking elsewhere that you're that you're, you're sitting up sitting forward uh, making eye contact with that person that you your body language is open that you're nodding that you're acknowledging but that you're not just nodding and acknowledging because you know that's the right thing to do in a conversation because you've had some training on active listening and i really hope you have at some point um but that you are genuinely nodding and acknowledging on the points which resonate with you and the points which you think, gosh, yes, I can, I can really see where you're coming from from that point of view. Uh, and one of the tools that might sound a bit counterintuitive, but I think um, feeds really well into an honesty in active listening is that it's natural to become distracted. It is natural. It happens to all of us. If you're in a conversation with somebody and you suddenly find you're thinking about your shopping list or what you're going to feed the kids for tea that evening, be honest about it. Say, I'm sorry, my mind drifted for a moment, but I really want to know what you just said. Can you, can you just go back a couple of steps for me? Uh, I think, you know, it's becoming more and more common in the Zoom world because we calls cut out and Wi-Fi isn't great and those sorts of things for us to be able to say, I'm sorry, I missed that. Can I hear it again? But if you can, you know, because what often happens is when in that moment you become embarrassed because you have drifted off, and then you don't quite know how to get back into the conversation and the person across the table from you can actually see that happening. So if you're just honest and say, this is what's happened, I really want to know what you had to say. Can you repeat the last bit for me? That's gonna go a long way towards building trust and having a great conversation with the person that you're talking to. So active listening is absolutely critical to the impactful short feedback loop. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> we we have we have already heard this one. So you guys are, are going to be uh are going to be surprised how bad of actors we are. But um yes, and I should have probably paused longer because the next thing we wanted to talk to you about is there's another exercise you can you can use, which is um a three seconds pause rule, if you wish. Every time you're in a Zoom meeting, in particular one that is well 
managed or slash uh, facilitated by someone where people do take turns, they understand conversational turn taking, they might understand ostentatious listening, um, active listening as Fionn has just spoke about. I think one of the things to really think of using and it only works in creative um, thinking meetings it works less so or rather in in uh, strategic design meetings it works less so in day-to-day -day operational ones is to consider a three seconds break after every person has finished their point let it land let it sink let it make a difference to you to them they will feel more heard you will have had the time to come back to the room if you had drifted or to show that you hadn't drifted whatever it is Count to three before you start saying something else. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. This is and an international then, video today, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the last thing we wanted to say is that all of this feeds back into just making sure that you bring all of these thoughts that we talked about today into your one-to-ones. So stick with those one-to-ones. They haven't got to be long, they haven't got to be arduous. They can be short five minute catch-ups, but just make sure that you are focusing on those. Use some technology to help you with that. We've got some in our technology and lots of other great um, apps and tools out there that you can use. But remember just to stay really focused on making sure that you're having those conversations with your people um, in order to that, that's really where you start embedding the feedback loop. So um, have good conversations. Well, thank you so much for listening to us again. And we'll see you next week with some, some tips on other topics on how to do your paperwork and how to get better at the psychological safety thing and um, become highly performant despite everything that's going on around us. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.